Halo Infinite's Season 2 patch notes list was very detailed, but left out a lot of things that were changed within the Season 2 update. So in this video, I'm going to provide 11 hidden changes that came with Season 2 for Halo Infinite. So if you want to know them all, make sure you stay tuned throughout the whole video to understand all the details. So the first big change that 343 just did not mention at all within the patch update here was that within the loot caves of fragmentation you will actually be able to check out weapon variants from the campaign and apparently they rotate and change around a little bit as well but so you can see right here we have the variants of the ravager as well as the skewer on top of that so really cool thing to see like this is actually a change i really wanted to see happen within the vtb because uh, with the loot cave additions that they added in like you could get like a sniper rifle sometimes or most times like a gravity hammer which was a nice addition but nothing really game changing that make you want to go there every single time now you get some awesome weapon variants on btb so this is a really cool change and i'm really happy they did this next is a change to the pelican in the campaign this was confirmed by foot ghost a fellow information youtuber guys if you want to check him out definitely great channel right there they just found us out can't fly the pelican in campaign anymore if you guys do not remember that this was like a kind of a weird like save the game in a weird state glitch that where if you saved it in a certain spot and did a certain kind of uh, steps and activities you could glitch out the pelican and then you can actually fly it around which is pretty freaking awesome but they patched that out with season two for some reason and there were just a ton of little changes like this that came with season two that were not in the patch notes whatsoever which a lot of people are not too happy about Another hidden change that happened with Season 2 is that now death effects have sound effects tied to them as well. You probably noticed this while you were playing, like if you had someone who died with the death skull effect, you hear like this kind of breathing, kind of ominous tone kind of come from it as well. Which I do think is a pretty cool addition. It's just that maybe it's a little too much because most people are wearing death animations or kind of kill animations on their weapons because... You know it's one of the few bits of customization we have but from what i played i didn't really feel like it was too noisy or anything like that next this was confirmed by mint blimps that they actually removed the shock rifle on btb which i'm like what really like really did that like now you have to rely on like those weapon pods to drop certain types of like sniper rifles and things like that i'm just like but i like the shock rifle and it's like not that easy of a weapon to use and i think it's just a really great addition like yeah it was very powerful but like that's the idea of it like basically being like a second tier power weapon. Next thing I want to go into is actually just thanking the sponsor of today's video, Gothic. They recently sent me out some jewelry. You should probably see me using it in the video. And it's actually some pretty cool stuff. I'm really enjoying it. They are like a really cool like alternative style jewelry website, guys. If you guys want to check them out, I highly suggest you do because they have some really cool styles here on the website. Really cool like necklaces, rings, and just a different types of bits of accessories that you would like to check out. They sent me this really cool Mandalorian style ring, which is like has a really cool like hefty weight to it and just looks really awesome. I'm really enjoying this. They sent me this Celtic ring, which is really cool and it actually has a nice little kind of fidget effect to it. So you can kind of fidget with it a little bit, which is actually kind of nice. I really enjoy it. You can get this cool little metal bracelet and stuff like that. So it's a bunch of like really cool like alternative style stuff like that if you want to check it out. And I even hooked up my wife with this cool like chain with this like wolf pendant on it. Like I said, it's like metal, has a nice weight to it. And honestly, it's pretty freaking cool. I'm really enjoying it. I'll definitely be wearing these like probably throughout multiple videos moving forward. And when I say they have like hundreds of different options, I literally mean it. They have so many different things for you to check out on their website like a lot of rings like i said and all the kind of stuff like there are so many things you can spend hours browsing their website to find something that you will like for yourself which i definitely would suggest checking it out it's actually a really cool website also if you follow the link in the pinned comment down below and then use my code kevin coolx at checkout it'll get you 20 percent off your purchase so thank you gothic for sponsoring the video but let's get right back into the content here Another big change that came for probably some of your ranked players out there that the overshield on Bazaar now has a delayed spawn timer. So it doesn't spawn as soon as you load into the game. It has a delay of 30 seconds, very similar to we have on Live Fire as well. This was found out by our friend Patman on the channel here. Another hidden change that directly affects how your game plays. So this is very important information to know. Another really important game changing effect that happened that was not mentioned within the patch notes as all well. within the rank modes, it looks like the Bizarre Slayer has been removed from the set list of game modes. Now I'm not a huge fan of Bizarre, so I'm okay with that, but it's just like, there's not that much variety left in rank with a lot of the maps and content being removed so far. So 
it's like one less thing that you get to have and it's just like makes it a little bit more redundant when playing ranked though we did get king of the hill and catalyst in the ranked modes as well so it kind of balanced itself out a little bit i guess and i'm sure many of you noticed this and it actually is a change that wasn't mentioned in the patch notes but we have a new animation now instead of having like the punching animation like we have here we have this new animation of turning around towards the camera for the intro of the matches which Again, this is kind of like a little thing where it's like, it'd be cool to know when that stuff comes around, but hey, it's in the game now. Now a big change that came with season two that just wasn't mentioned whatsoever was the removal of a lot of skill jumps within Halo Infinite. And many people within the community, including myself, are not fans of these changes. The first big change here was the jump on the streets. You jump on that awning and then you jump off onto that overhang. You can't do it anymore, it, which is a real shame because that really limits your amount of your movement and freedom you have when it comes to traversing the map, especially at that section. Now you can still make that jump up to the overhang utilizing the thruster, but you have to do it quite right. And it's a little bit more of a skill jump, honestly, to do, use it that way. So there still is that ability, but it's because you can only do it when you have a thruster and not very many people are happy about this. And this has happened throughout the entirety of Halo's multiplayer. This jump right here on Livefire was a great little spot. You can jump on top of that box. If you crouch up on top of it, it'll help you maybe avoid a little bit less damage on nades, get a surprise on somebody who's just kind of walking through without checking their corners and things like that. But, and also you can also use it to jump on top of this onto that little awning that's above the door to get up to sandbag, which was a really skillful jump and pretty difficult to make, but definitely doable if you had enough practice. And now that's just not possible anymore. The jump on Bazaar here, which would take you from bottom of big doors up to where the battle rifle spawns. It's a very, again, a very high skill jump, but very doable if you have enough practice. And now this has been completely removed from the game to where you can't do it anymore. Now the removal of this jump, I'm genuinely surprised about where you can't really jump on top of this little like archway on recharge anymore. Like it seems like it was kind of designed for you to be able to do that. But you can see right here, you have some skilled players trying to make that jump and they can't make it you can you, like, apparently use the grapple shot to kind of get on this little bit of a ledge right there as you can see right here but it's like you barely stay in, on it where it's made basically not really functionally possible anymore during a game which is like this jump seems to be like intentional why they did that why have that huge open space if you can't actually like utilize it it's just so weird that they like changed a lot of these little things like that and these are like skill jumps, like the legit skill jumps, which are a part of Halo. Like that's one of the cool things about Halo's map design that if you create these bits of little things you can kind of jump on and move around, then you can have a nice little skill gap and create some cool plays that you people wouldn't expect and have a really good flank. Well now, a lot of those really awesome jumps have been removed. One of the best players in the game out there, Lucid, actually replied to this saying like, yeah, the streets jump, the live fire jump, another live fire jump right there, the bizarre jumps as well, as well ramp sliding, as you guys know, has been nerfed a bit, not too absurd, but at least like probably like about 80% what it used to be kind of thing. But then saying like, who asked for this? And I'm kind of like on that same boat as well. Like these are kind of like these fun skill jumps and movement mechanics that people have been practicing and getting down for the last six months and then just overnight without any form of communication it's gone and that's what's really upsetting people it's just i think more the lack of communication and feedback from the community and even a former 343 employee blaze who was part of the multiplayer sustained team who helped design maps in force so he kind of knows a little bit about map design now he works with split game when it comes to map design and said this saying someone literally had to go out of their way and spend valuable time to remove features that were important to major sub communities of their game not only invalidating the time commitment of those who already invested learning and teaching but deterring them from continuing on essentially saying that like you remove all these awesome skill jumps that people have spent so much time learning and also nerfing the sliding ability which was a really good mechanic to help move around the map it just kind of makes people go like well why would i bother learning these jumps and slides in the first place when they could just be removed the next day the worst part about this is just a lack of communication about this but i'm pretty sure 343 knew that they were going to get pushback on this because it's something that people have been spending time and learning but it could also could be something that's not in their vision of what they wanted the map to play out like for the games in of Halo Infinite. So it just, we need some communication on that because these are really cool skill jumps. Skill jumps has always been a thing within Halo and it's really great to have like these minor little things where it's like less obvious for you to traverse the map. But if you know how to move them through the map properly, which map knowledge is a huge game component when it comes to game sense and knowledge within Halo, that 
removing that kind of stuff is just a big shame. Like, it's those sort of awesome little hidden mechanics that just makes that waters down the gameplay a little bit more, you know what I mean? But if you guys are new to the channel and missed any content from me recently, check out the videos in the playlist right here. I got a link to all my Halo news and informational videos right there for you. So thanks so much for watching. Greatly appreciate it. I'll catch you all in the next one. Peace out.